Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. Am I the asshole for feeling hurt my husband ruined with another woman on his trip? My husband, 36F, a 42M, is currently in Las Vegas for a national bowling tournament. He's there with his mom and her friends slash relatives from their bowling league. He's an avid bowler plays in a Tuesday night league, often competes in state tournaments and sometimes in national ones. Usually I go with him and occasionally bowl myself. This year we decided I'd stay home with our three boys 4, 8, 10 because of the heat and smoke in Vegas in July. My husband and I have been married for 11 years. This is his second marriage. His first marriage failed because he found out his wife was cheating on him with another man. I've never, not even once, thought he'd get close to another woman while he's with me. He's just not that type of person. So, here's how this trip began. Normally, when he travels without me, at least once a year due to his work and my time off requirements, he stays in a hotel room with his mom or our boys. Three nights ago, I FaceTimed him while he was in his hotel room. It was great and he talked about getting a nap because he was sleep deprived. I asked if he had his own room since that would be awesome and he said, oh no, is rooming with me. I asked who that was and he said something I can't remember except for the word she. I was like, wait, what? He then explained that he was supposed to room with his mom's boyfriend, but plans changed, and now he's sharing a room with another woman on the trip. He told me that I had played cornhole with her last month at a gathering. I reminded him who I played cornhole with him and a girl, but not the person he mentioned I didn't know this woman at all, and then he got really confused. He didn't understand why I was upset or disappointed so I dropped it because I didn't want to ruin his time in bowling. I know I should have asked how he'd feel if the roles were reversed but I didn't. Partly because I didn't want to argue, we rarely do, when the kids were awake, and partly because I didn't want to hear him dismiss my concerns as imaginary. I've barely slept since that night, with my dreams full of worst-case scenarios, and I haven't really brought it up again. There have been a few times he mentioned napping, and how lousy he's doing in Vegas. I've sarcastically mentioned a few times that he'd have more fun if I were there instead, but he's brushed it off. So here we are, he has spent the last three nights in a hotel room with a woman that is not me or his mother Amita for being upset. Today I texted him to say this situation has bothered me for three days I have questions, and we need to talk. I asked who this woman is, how old she is, and why he didn't tell me about this situation before I found out by chance. There was confusion about the rooms, something about someone not going, so people got shuffled around. He ended up paired with a woman about my age. He said he didn't think it was a big deal and didn't want to inconvenience everyone else on the trip. He also said he didn't want to upset me, which is why he didn't tell me up front. He assured me I had nothing to worry about and that they were never alone in the room except when sleeping. I know I know but I genuinely believe him on this. I was honest with him and told him that if the roles were reversed, out of respect for him, I would call him immediately to make sure he was okay with it. I told him that although I trust him completely, I shouldn't have found out the way I did. And he shouldn't dismiss my concerns. I told him the lack of communication from the start made me feel suspicious, regardless of the intentions or what actually happened. Regarding not wanting to upset me, I told him I'd understand and not be upset if he was just honest. He apologized a lot. I told him next time just communicate he insists there won't be a next time. So, call me naive if you want, but I'm letting it go for now. He's coming home tonight and I plan to have a fun evening with him before I don't see him for another two weeks. I've cried a lot knowing her age, but letting this out has made me feel much better. My husband will be home tonight and we'll talk. I hope it's with his 82-year-old grandma, I'm not handling this as well as I thought. I've decided to let it go I know he didn't do anything with that woman. You might disagree and call me crazy if you want but I know that. However despite my best efforts, I can't get over the fact that he decided to do something he knew I wouldn't agree with and didn't tell me about it. Everything feels chaotic. I talked to a few colleagues, I don't really have friends who aren't his friends that I talk to regularly and I don't want to talk to my family because that's a storm I can't handle right now, and they were all shocked and angrier at him than I've let myself feel, most of them know him, know what he's like and what ended his first marriage he used to work at the same company. We have less than 24 hours together before he, his mom, and all three of my kids take a trip to the other side of the country. I've been sitting with my feelings, and will continue to do so until they return nearly a week from now. I spoke to them on the phone tonight before they went to bed, and one of the first things my husband said to me was, I'm going to sleep with a redhead tonight. And I nearly lost it before realizing he was talking about one of our boys, we have three sons. After a long silence I said, 
You better be talking about, and I was so mad I didn't even get why he didn't get it. All our conversations have been short and to the point because I really don't want to talk to him. I called my eldest son and spoke to my kids instead. His mom hasn't really said much to me which makes me think he's told her something. Which is fine, I really don't care about that. In short, I don't know what to do. It's midnight at home, I tried to go to bed two hours ago and can't stop sobbing so I got up and let it all out. It feels great to get it out, but I know I need to talk to someone. I have a support line through work I can call, but won't tonight too many drinks and I don't want to bring that into it, but I'll call tomorrow. I know I should be upset and angry, and not let this go. But I'm scared that when I talk to a professional, they'll tell me I'm blowing things out of proportion. I'll still call, but first I need to calm down. He's cycling for seven days over 400 miles so even though I want to tear him apart right now, especially after his completely insensitive and meaningless joke tonight, I haven't. Because I want him to come home safe and healthy. Regardless of my feelings right now, the most important thing is the father of my children coming home, safely, so we can deal with this at least in the same city, and not while he's a thousand miles away. With his mom. And my kids. Story 2. Am I the asshole why did my best friend and husband suddenly cut off all communication? Something strange is going on between my husband, Phil, and my best friend, Dana, and I'm not sure if I'm just imagining things, or if their behavior is genuinely suspicious. Phil and I have been married for four years, and we're both in our early thirties. We're very happy together. He loves me a lot, but sometimes I catch him lying to protect my feelings, which I don't really like. Dana has been my best friend since college, and we were roommates. To give you some basic info about Dana, she was in a long-term relationship with her boyfriend for three years, but they broke up last year. He was very insecure about Dana, and was quite controlling about who she hung out with. He was particularly jealous of Phil for some reason so they'd avoid socializing with us. However, since the breakup, Dana and I have become closer, spending a lot of time shopping, dining out, and so on. Phil also enjoys joining us occasionally, but not always. Phil and Dana got along well, and Dana even told me that if I ever found another Phil, I should set up a blind date between them as soon as possible. A month ago, Phil, Dana, and I planned to go to a concert in town. Phil was really excited because it was one of his favorite bands. I started feeling unwell on the morning of the concert and just wanted to rest. Phil was disappointed, but suggested we could give the tickets to our friends and catch the band another time. I really didn't want to ruin his plans, so I called a few friends, and my friend Jess, who's also friends with Dana, was thrilled to go to the concert in my place. Phil still wanted to cancel, but I insisted he go because I'd feel terrible if he missed the concert. They went and enjoyed the show. Phil kept sending me photos throughout the night. The concert ended at 11 p.m., but I had fallen asleep earlier due to medication. When I woke up in the morning, I found myself alone in bed. I quickly checked my messages and saw Phil's last message at 11 p.m., saying they were leaving the concert and he'd be home soon after dropping Dana off. I went to the living room and found Phil sleeping on the sofa in the clothes he wore to the concert. I waited for him to wake up and asked him about the night and when he got home. He said he got home around 2 to 3 a.m. He mentioned there were many accidents outside the concert venue and traffic was terrible. He said he dropped Dana off at her place, and then came straight home. I asked him why he was sleeping on the sofa, and he told me he didn't want to disturb me and was too tired to change clothes. Phil had some glitter on his clothes, but he explained it was from dancing in the crowd at the concert. So he just crashed on the sofa and fell asleep immediately. It seemed plausible, and Dana also confirmed the story. However, strange behavior started after that night. First, Phil stopped joining me when I went out with Dana. He'd come up with the most unbelievable excuses to avoid going out with me when Dana was around. Phil also became a bit distant from me since that night, and I noticed he was spending more time in his home office playing video games at night instead of going to bed. Two weeks ago, I invited Dana over to her house for drinks after we went shopping, and she started coming up with excuses to avoid coming over. She hasn't been to our house since then. The only time Phil and Dana have seen each other was at a house party at a friend's place last weekend. I observed their behavior, and they both avoided each other. I asked Phil why he was avoiding Dana, and he said it was just in my imagination. Dana said the same thing but then started coming up with silly reasons to avoid coming to our apartment. I feel deep down that their behavior is very suspicious, but I'm not sure if it's just my insecurity. How do I find out what's really going on? I've checked Phil's phone several times, but the only messages between him and Dana are few and none since that night. I feel like something happened between them that night 
and they're both avoiding answering even basic questions about why they're avoiding each other. Am I the offer assuming the worst? I really don't want to seem insecure, but it's eating me up inside. I managed to access Phil's phone last Friday night. I didn't have time to recover any deleted messages. However, thanks to someone's suggestion, I went through his photo library and looked at the pictures he took that night. One important detail stood out, Dana's outfit. Dana wore a white shirt and denim shorts to the concert. Since it was an outdoor concert, she took off her shirt and was only wearing a blue bikini. She had some glitter tattoos on her shoulders and back. By the end of the night, she had put her shirt back on. So to have glitter on the car seat and Phil's clothes, Dana must have taken her shirt off in the car. I was so angry and couldn't stay calm anymore. I went and confronted Phil. He immediately broke down and started apologizing. He said it was his fault for going too far and had felt guilty all month. He said he didn't want to tell me because I'd be very upset and he just wanted to forget about it. I told him to tell me all the details of what happened, and he did. He told me that Dana and Jess were both drunk at the concert. Phil had to carry Dana to the car. Dana slept in the car for an hour while Phil drove. When she woke up, she started playing music and singing loudly. At one point, she told Phil that it was hot in the car, and before he could turn down the air conditioning, she took off her shirt. Phil said he was very uncomfortable at that point, and asked Dana if she was okay with him driving to her place, where she could sleep in the guest room since her apartment would take another 30 minutes to drive to. She insisted on going home, so Phil drove her there. When she got out, she asked Phil if he could take her up to her apartment because she was still drunk. After opening the apartment door, she hugged Phil and thanked him. Phil apologized for the hug lasting too long, and they had a moment. I was in tears and asked him if they kissed. Phil told me of course not, but he couldn't describe it, though there was definitely a moment between them. He said Dana invited him inside, but he immediately told Dana he had to leave and ran to his car. I kept asking what happened, and he just said they had a moment he felt he couldn't control and had to get out of there. After getting home, Dana texted Phil that he should come inside. Phil kept telling Dana it was an accident and to forget about it. But Dana kept asking Phil if he was attracted to her and if he had a good time. Phil told Dana he wasn't attracted to her and would never be attracted to her and told her not to tell me about it. She agreed, and he deleted all the messages. He said he slept on the sofa because they had been texting for a long time and he didn't want me to hear it. I asked him if he could recover the messages, and he told me he had deleted them and also cleared all his archives and sent messages. He just wanted to forget the incident. I showed him my post and thanks to a comment, we went looking for the messages on the SD card. Phil was right, and the messages matched what he described. I'm still very angry with Phil for not telling me about it from the start. This is where things get extremely strange. I invited Dana to lunch yesterday and met with her. I told her I had spoken to Phil, and he had confessed everything that happened that night at the concert. I asked her if she wanted a chance to tell her side of the story. Dana immediately became defensive. The story remained the same until they arrived at her apartment building. Dana said that when she opened her apartment door, she hugged Phil for a long time to have a great night. She said maybe Phil wanted more, but nothing happened beyond that. I asked her why she invited him inside her apartment. She said she wanted to offer him some water and snacks because he had driven for a long time. I said it was a bad move to invite my husband inside her apartment at 1am when she felt he wanted more than just a hug from her. She said I was just jealous and crazy. We started arguing and she blurted out that she wasn't the one aroused during the hug. I told her she would never see Phil again in her life, and that our friendship was over. She started shouting that she knew Phil loved her, and he wasn't acting because of me. She continued to say I always complained about Phil and didn't deserve him. She said Phil had been very good to her after the breakup, and she felt he'd leave me for her if he had the chance. Finally, she said she could make Phil much happier than I could, and that he had started to realize that. At this point, I just wanted to avoid an explosion and walked away. I talked to Phil in the evening about what Dana said. He confirmed that he was aroused when he hugged Dana that night and didn't know why. Dana held his hand and invited him in after the hug, and he just ran to his car. He said he felt guilty about it, but that didn't mean he had feelings for Dana. He said he was very happy to be married to me and wanted to keep it that way for the rest of his life. Although I'm relieved nothing happened between them, I'm still struggling to deal with my thoughts. I feel angry with Phil for hugging Dana in the middle of the night when she was practically naked. He should have known better. On the other hand, I also feel like an awe that my best friend had feelings for my husband, which I was unaware of, and I pushed both of them to go to the concert. Story 3 
Aite for ruining my husband's tournament because he wouldn't help with our newborn. My husband Jake, 30M, and I, 27F, recently welcomed our first child, Emma, who is now three months old. Like many new parents, we faced a tough period marked by sleepless nights and endless diaper changes. I'm on maternity leave, so I'm home with Emma all day, but I still require Jake's assistance, particularly during the night. Jake works remotely and is a passionate gamer. He spends most of his leisure time playing online games with his friends. I've tried to be accommodating and give him his space, but it's been challenging when he refuses to assist with Emma at night. Despite asking him several times to share the responsibility, he always claims he's too fatigued or that he's engaged in an important game. Breastfeeding has been especially tough. Emma often has difficulty latching properly, resulting in painful and sometimes cracked nipples. I've already experienced mastitis twice which causes me severe pain and fever. Even though Jake sees my suffering, he merely laughs it off and never offers any help during these painful episodes, leaving me feeling even more desperate for support. One night, after I'd been up with Emma for the third time and Jake was still engrossed in his computer game, I reached my limit. I entered his office and asked him to take over so I could get some rest. He dismissed me, saying he was in the middle of a game and that I should handle it. He even said, you're on maternity leave and free all day while I have to work, so I need my relaxation time, you're just sitting around doing nothing all day anyway. I was completely exhausted and on the verge of tears. I needed his help, but he was utterly dismissive. In a moment of frustration and desperation, I turned off the Wi-Fi router. This caused Jake to lose his temper. He stormed out of his office, shouting at me. It turns out he and his friends were in the midst of an online tournament, and were about to win when I cut off the Wi-Fi. He called me selfish and irresponsible, accusing me of sabotaging his only source of relaxation. Jake continued to argue that I had no right to interrupt his me time, and that I should have waited until he was finished. He added that we haven't been intimate much since Emma's birth, and accused me of wanting to take everything away from him while doing nothing all day. Jake also doesn't help during the day after he finishes work at 5 p.m. I don't expect him to assist while working, but once he's off, he should be more involved in parenting. Instead, he heads straight to his games, leaving me to manage everything on my own. Since then, he's been sulking around the house and barely speaking to me. To make matters worse, his friends have been sending me hurtful messages, calling me a crazy wife and saying I'm unreasonable. One even suggested Jake should leave me because I'm too demanding. I feel like I'm losing my mind just trying to get a bit of support. I'm exhausted, and all I wanted was for Jake to be more involved in parenting, especially during those late-night feedings and diaper changes. Instead, I'm being portrayed as the villain for wanting help with our newborn. AITA? Edit 1. For those questioning why I married him, or didn't realize this before, Jake was very different before Emma was born. He was supportive and understanding, and this behavior is new and shocking to me. Edit 2. To those calling me the asshole, I'm sorry. Your comments have deeply hurt me, and I feel more distressed than I can express. I didn't turn off the Wi-Fi out of spite, or because I couldn't handle my responsibilities. It was a desperate measure, after feeling utterly unsupported and alone. I'm overwhelmed with guilt and sadness. This time with Emma has been incredibly challenging. I'm constantly exhausted and in pain from breastfeeding. I cry often because I feel like a failure. I just can't handle it anymore. Jake works hard, and I appreciate him, but his indifference to my struggles makes me feel incredibly isolated. I spend my days and nights in tears, wondering if I'm failing as a mother and wife. All I wanted was for us to share the responsibilities of parenting, especially during those late-night feedings and diaper changes. I've been struggling with feelings of sadness and guilt, questioning if I'm failing in my roles. It's not about controlling his downtime, it's about needing his support during this tough period. I wish you could understand the depth of loneliness and frustration I'm experiencing. Your comments about me being selfish and immature hit hard because I've been questioning myself constantly. I never wanted to play the victim or make Jake out to be the bad guy. I just wanted us to work together as a team, as we promised each other when we decided to start a family. I apologize if my actions hurt anyone, including Jake and his friends. I was overwhelmed and at my breaking point. I feel trapped in a cycle of guilt, feeling like everything is my fault. I never intended to hurt anyone, I just don't know how to cope anymore. I'm not trying to be selfish, I'm just trying to survive. Edit 3. 
Some people are saying I'm making breastfeeding a bigger issue than it is, but mastitis isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's an excruciating pain that feels like shards of glass stabbing into my breasts with every suckle. Sometimes, the pain is so intense that I cry silently while Emma feeds and have to bury my face in a pillow to muffle my cries, because Jake has made it clear that my suffering bothers him. He claims he is either working, gaming, or sleeping, so I shouldn't disturb him. And while some people ask what he could do, since he can't breastfeed, I'm not expecting him to do that. I just want him to support me. He never offers help during these times even though I'm in tears and desperately need support.